Thank you <clears throat> very much, Mr. Speaker. Unlike my very good friend to my right, insinuated, the voice isn't that good, Mr. Speaker, and I don't intend to be extremely long. I will not withdraw. That statement resonates, Mr. Speaker. It resonates with the behavioral pattern of the leader of the opposition, member for Miku South. Member for Miku South wanted to be in the House. He was granted the opportunity to be in the House. But as you can see, Mr. Speaker, his chair is conspicuously empty. So basically, it was an imposition that he wanted to come to pass. Mr. Speaker, when I was first elected as a parliamentarian and took my seat in this August chamber just over 17 years ago, I never thought there would come a time when I would have had to make a contribution on a motion of such a nature. But then again, whilst this is the first time, we have seen many events happening in this country of ours for the very first time since 2016 when the United Workers' Party were victorious at the polls. You see, Mr. Speaker, we are called honorable, and by virtue of carrying that title, we are expected to do what is best. We are expected to uphold the laws. We are expected not to make a mockery of the laws. And we are expected to conduct ourselves with a certain degree of decorum. We are expected, Mr. Speaker, to preach and accept adherence to our laws. But most notably, the supreme law of this land, our constitution. From the time the United Workers Party won the elections in 2016, the then Prime Minister and current member for Miku North showed disdain showed Miku South, sorry, showed disdain, showed disrespect, and showed total disregard for the laws of this country. It started, Mr. Speaker, by a blatant breach of Section 36 of the Constitution, which reads, Mr. Speaker, Section, sorry, 54.1, which reads, Mr. Speaker, and I quote, Each session of Parliament shall be held at such place within St. Lucia and shall begin at such time, not being later than 12 months from the end of the preceding section, session of Parliament, if it has been prorogued, or more than one month, not more than one month, from the holding of a general election. Not one, more than one month after the general elections of 2016, Parliament was supposed to have convened. It did not. The then Prime Minister blatantly disregarded the constitutional provision and when members of the media confronted him those, in my view, who were apparently more savvy than him in that regard, what did he respond to them? He responded by saying, even if the Constitution says that Parliament must convene within 30 days, the Constitution did not lay sanctions for non-adherence. That was his response, Mr. Speaker. So there were no sanctions imposed and therefore, I don't have to comply. Is that what honorable men do, Mr. Speaker? As a leader, 
You comply with the laws of the country, Mr. Speaker. You cannot say if the Constitution does not impose sanctions, you are under no obligation to comply. And you know, Mr. Speaker, that was the start. That was the start of the disobedience to the laws of this country by a government headed by the member for Miku South. Our parliament quickly became the laughing stock of the region, Mr. Speaker. You had a situation then with the deputy speaker. Section 36 of the constitution mandates the appointment of a deputy speaker as soon as it is convenient. Let me quickly read it. When the house first meets after a general election of members and before before it proceeds to the dispatch of any other business except the election of the speaker the house shall and shall is mandatory mr speaker it is not discretionary it does not say the house may it says the house shall appoint a deputy speaker mr speaker what happened to us what happened to us the prime minister then he forgot that constitutional provision he forgot the convention that obtained he forgot that this has never happened in the history of this country and he made a mockery of this provision mr speaker he made a mockery and i remember a minister in antigua asking me well, how y'all do it without deputy laughing literally laughing at what was happening to us our neighboring islands they were basically using us as an instrument of laughter mr speaker even when in 1987 sir john george melvin compton won by a one-seat majority he won by a one-seat majority in back-to-back -back elections mr speaker he never for once ran this chamber without a deputy. He never did. He appointed a deputy speaker. But no, not this current leader of the opposition. His first excuse, you will remember, Mr. Speaker, that it was not yet convenient. He later clothed himself with another excuse that the appointment of the deputy speaker is the responsibility of the entire chamber basically pointing fingers of blame at the opposition then so mr speaker the trend of disrespect to our constitution and to our parliament by this man is on record and when this government for fear that another character like that member emerges from the cracks of, of, of nowhere, Mr. Speaker, the government sought a constitutional amendment so it can never ever happen again. But what did the leader of the opposition do, Mr. Speaker? He cried foul. Rather than saying that we are basically fixing an ill, he cries foul and says that we are creating an opportunity for a job for the boys. Not reflecting on the fact that for five years, for five years, Mr. Speaker, he convened parliament without a deputy. But Mr. Speaker, what the leader of the opposition did not realize, you know, and they, they say colloquially, tutubushi, was that the government was blocking all holes to prevent a recurrence of what had happened a recurrence of a blatant disregard to such a constitutional provision that has been entrenched and has been adhered to from ever since we convened parliament mr speaker and this was done to ensure that no other leader that comes from wherever they come from would take our laws for what we colloquially refer to as papi show mr speaker the situation with the deputy speaker became so dire that the first speaker 
overtly clamored out for a deputy. She even took to social media for a deputy, Mr. Speaker. And in an interview, she said, and I quote, not only is a deputy essential, she said she was a wife, she was a mother, and how could she function without a deputy? Mr. Speaker, on many occasions, the House had to be suspended in the middle of various presentations because a nature had called. Look you, Mr. Speaker, your deputy slips into this chair in a very inconspicuous manner. Sometimes my head is down. By the time I lift my head and I say, Mr. Speaker, I need to correct myself and say, Mr. Deputy. So that is the smoothness with which this parliament operates right now, Mr. Speaker. When the first speaker in Leon Theodore could have taken, and she could have taken no more, she had to quit, Mr. Speaker. But what I want to remind this house is what she went through. Yes, what she went through before she left the chair of the speaker. Let's take a listen, Mr. Speaker. It, it is written in the Constitution that the fact the responsibility to appoint a deputy, deputy Speaker of the House. The debate over the appointment of Deputy Speaker, speaker began in August 2016 when Sarah Flabora resigned as the position to become a minister in the then two-month-old Alan Chastney administration. The former Prime Minister refused to allow the government side to elect a deputy, contending it was the duty of the entire parliament. This move was at odds arose over its constitutionality, leading Francois to test the merits in the courts in a case against the office of the Speaker of the House. The island was without a deputy speaker for five years until the SLP was voted into office in the summer of 2021, with Miku North MP Jeremiah Norbert now in the post. I really want to ask the Speaker the question that everybody wants to know. Do you need a deputy? Most certainly. <laughs> you said most certainly. Why is that? What what makes you say that you require a deputy? Apart from saying, according to Sparrow, the famous <laughs> no, deputy is essential. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> well, the Constitution Order of St. Lucia provides for a deputy at Section 36. That's number one. This is mirrored or repeated in standing order number three of the standing orders of the House of Assembly. So there is the need, there is the need for a deputy. I am human. I am a wife. I am a mother. God forbid that there is an emergency or have taken ill and the house sitting has been set for a particular day. Does that mean that the business of the house will not, it has to be postponed? At your convenience. At my convenience. <laughs> well, that is what is happening right now. In New York, in the fiscal year 2016-2017, recurrent expenditure was honorable, one honorable, million. Hon honorable member, please bear with me for a minute. <laughs> Point of order. Point of order. Is that point of order? Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm very, very sorry to my colleague, but can I just ask um, for the House to take a five minute recess, if you don't mind? Sure. Thank you. Honorable members, the question is that the House do stand suspended for five minutes. As many as of that opinion say aye, as many as of a contrary opinion say no, this House do stand suspended for five minutes. <laughs> All right. I have been listening to the continuation of the debate on the 2017-2018 estimates of revenue and expenditure. Uh, just before the House went to break, you were listening to the, the voice of the Honourable Member for Library. Honorable Alva Baptist, and in the middle of his presentation, the Prime Minister stood to ask for a five minute break. So that will take us up to 
10 minutes past 10 when the main member for Labri will continue his presentation. It's like a, a bull in a china shop, Shastri was. Mashing up everything, laws, everything. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. That basically shows, Mr. Speaker, what happened in this chamber without a deputy for five years. Five years, you blatantly disregarded a constitutional provision. You made a mockery of it. You started by convening parliament way in excess of 30 days as mandated by the constitution. You went on, you run the country for five years without a deputy speaker. So breaking laws, Mr. Speaker, is nothing new. Those blatant assaults on our laws need to be addressed and it continues up to now. No one, Mr. Speaker, no one can do as he or she pleases and believe they can operate with total impunity, Mr. Speaker. When the United Workers' Party won the elections in 2016, it was the first time we had the, an extravagant swearing-in ceremony outside the city circuits. Where it was in Viewfort, with each minister have a hotel room. You know? Can you believe this, Mr. Speaker? That normally happened within the confines of this chamber government house or the prime minister's official residence but no not with this man it was the very first time parliament convened in excess of 30 days and it was the very first time we were forced to function without a deputy and let us hope mr speaker that for the sake of good governance of this country of ours we are never permitted to go back into an era like that, Mr. Speaker. That should never happen again in this country, Mr. Speaker. But before the first speaker had enough, Mr. Speaker, she was always crossing swords with the then Prime Minister, who believed from all accounts that he was king of all he surveyed, Mr. Speaker. He was king of all he surveyed. He complied reluctantly once or twice. But otherwise, Mr. Speaker, he defied both speakers under his watch. After Leon Theodore couldn't take any more, in came Andy Daniel. And sadly, Mr. Speaker, neither of them, as my colleague said previously, neither of them could have stood up to him because he believed he paid the piper, so he called the tunes. And that's a sad thing, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, let's take a, a, a listen to an eight second video where Andy Daniel is going, Mr. VM, Mr. VM, in a very tiresome voice. Let's take a listen. And I'm misleading. Just, Just like, like the, when, the when the member, when the, the member, member came. came. Mr. Lies. Brown, Lies. Mr. Lies. Prime Minister. very well you know but you know mr speaker the one that broke the camel's back was when leon Tiedo told the prime minister she was speaker then to take a seat he reluctantly complied but sadly she never had the chance to tell him that again she was out let's take a listen to it mr. Madam Speaker, I'm very happy for your, your judgment. I mean, and, and just for a point of a clarification, if one well, goes... Um, no, Prime Minister. Prime Minister. I just, I just wanted to make the point, Madam Speaker, because, you know, it's, it's all a learning issue for all of us. In uh, the standing orders, point... Three. Prime Minister, please take your seat. Thank you. And, and you know, Mr. Speaker, you could leave it that way for a, a while, um, Mr. Hoddley. Those are the kinds of transpirations that occurred within this chamber, Mr. Speaker. When Andy Daniel came here, Mr. Speaker, he asked the former Prime Minister to withdraw a statement. He asked him to withdraw, and he said boldly, I am not withdrawing the statement. Do what you want. Let's take a listen to it, Mr. Speaker. Right there in front of us, right? That we were misleading the House. 
Honorable Prime Minister. Honorable Prime Minister. Honorable Prime Minister. You cannot stand and say you're not going to withdraw a statement. I'm not going to withdraw it. So you're going to have to take whatever action you want. You're not hearing this, folks. You want to play that again for me, please. Play it again for those who have not seen or heard it. Hear it. And he said Prime right Minister. there in front of us, right, that we were misleading the House. Honorable Prime it Minister. Possible. Honorable Prime Minister. Honorable Prime Minister. You cannot stand and say you're not going to withdraw a statement. I'm not going to withdraw it. So you're going to have to take whatever action you want. Can you imagine, Mr. Mr. Speaker? Can you imagine this member for Miku South is accustomed of doing as he pleases? And if this is not dictatorial, I don't know what is. What is worse, Mr. Speaker? On this occasion, the then speaker asked him to withdraw. He boldly said, take whatever, whatever action you went. Then Andy Daniel went on and he lists the request as though he was begging, please withdraw. Please withdraw. Let's take a listen to the second request. But I'm not Honorable Prime Minister, I'm going to ask you, please, to withdraw the state. I'm not but I'm not Honorable Prime Minister, I'm going to ask you, please, to withdraw the state. I'm not. You all are hearing this? You all are hearing this, Mr. Speaker? So don't believe, don't believe the recalcitrant attitude that was shown by the member of Miku North towards you is new ground you. It's not new ground, Miku South, sorry. It's not new ground. This is how the man behaves. This is how the man behaves. And what is worse, Mr. Speaker, after that episode, he brought the speaker into cabinet. He summoned the man into cabinet and scolded him for what he termed as blatant disrespect. And the member for Castries North will bear witness to that. You know, so that is a man who is in the habit of disrespecting people. You are asked to withdraw, humbly withdraw. The speaker list it as though he was literally begging you, Mr. Prime Minister, please withdraw. I'm not. And then summon the man to cabinet, probably threaten him, threaten to fire him, put his bread on the line. You know, and you know, Mr. Speaker, that is what you have here in this gentleman from Miku North, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, the sad thing is, you know, <laughs> Leon Theodore, the first speaker that he had, she had to be literally fighting with the then Prime Minister, even to get a chance to speak. Let's take a listen to that. So, Mr. Speaker, the situation at hand is not new. It is not new, and it is an extension, like I said previously, of the behavioral pattern of the leader of the opposition. And we have witnessed that kind of behavior over the years, Mr. Speaker. Over the years, we have witnessed it in this chamber, and we continue to witness it for the last six and a half years that it was made an elected member. We continue to see that kind of conduct in, the, in, in this chamber, Mr. Speaker. Total disregard to the law. Total disregard to the rules. Mr. Speaker, you have on a multiplicity of occasions asked me to withdraw statements. 
I'm sure well in excess of 10 times. And there has been not one occasion, Mr. Speaker, that I have even contemplated refusing to do so. Fales to state I will not do so. I accept your guidance with grace and humility. Even on that unfortunate Friday, Mr. Speaker, the day that became the subject matter of the disciplinary proceedings, upon resumption from a standpoint of magnanimity, I felt the compunction, Mr. Speaker, to offer an apology, even if it was not requested. I felt, Mr. Speaker, that I may, in your view, have behaved in an unparliamentary manner. Probably, I may not have, but it is with that in my, in, in, in my, in my mind, Mr. Speaker, I felt I owed you an apology, even if not invoked. But the leader of the opposition is far from that, Mr. Speaker. And I want to put place on record my commendation to you, Mr. Speaker, in being a model speaker. I want to commend you for doing what's right, even showing a bit of compassion in so doing. The two speakers that presided in this chamber prior to you, Mr. Speaker, were both appointed by the leader of the opposition. And so he felt he could have disrespected the offices with total impunity. You are cut from a different cloth, Mr. Speaker, and to you I say, bravo. I recently saw a clip, Mr. Speaker, of a suspension of a member of parliament from Antigua, assault is his name, I think. And the speaker was not as tolerant as you. You handled the situation, in my view, extremely well. As it relates to the temporary suspension, I want to say this. The people of Miku South deserve their representative in this chamber. But you see, that right was reconferred upon him, and he has greeted us with his absence, only to make a statement. That is the subtle disrespect that has been shown not only to this chamber, but to the people of Miku South. At the commencement of the term, Mr. Speaker, I'm sure you will remember and other members will, he had taken it up on his own volition to absent himself for on numerous occasions. In fact, I believe there was one time it was nearing the maximum amount of sessions a parliamentarian could have missed. He quickly militated against it and found himself in the house. But we don't want it that way. Even if he's absent, let it be on his own volition and not that of ours. But I want to caution him, Mr. Speaker, as I close, that within all family circles, within every organization, within society itself, there are rules and regulations to which we all must subscribe. No one is above the law. No one can operate with total impunity. And whatsoever he reapeth, so shall, whatsoever he soweth, so shall he reapeth. I thank you, Mr. Speaker.